I've worried for a while um, about age and why is it going to be a, you know, you're all done by 24? Because if that's the case, that starts to play into that narrative around the unknown, the unnamed uh, manager of the League of Legends side, who simply says it's a conveyor belt and there's no point investing because they're, they're looking at a, they're writing down their investment over like three or four years in a, like a piece of office machinery, which would just be crazy. So, you know, if there's a if there's a way that what you guys are doing and others like you are able to really dig into the the, the length of the career. So, as Jamie says, Cristiano and Ronaldo, it's no surprise, that guy is a machine. And he has been since he arrived at Manchester United as a young boy, and he took it seriously. If you listen to what he says, you know, he absolutely lives his life in order to put the football shirt on and go and score. And I mean, that guy has made Portugal like he's a one man team. It's ludicrous, really. You know, just he's like Michael. He's like he's like Michael Jordan, you know, for Portugal. Yeah. yeah. You, know, whatever, think, whenever, you know, whenever they play, if he's put on the pitch, you know, he's going to score. I think just with that very quickly, there are athletes such as Michael Jordan. One of the people I like is Matt Fraser from the CrossFit Games. There are just certain individuals that will live their lives in such a way where they will ask themselves the question every day, will this lead to me performing better? And there they they are the anomalies. They're the one zero zero point whatever it is, one percent that reach that called like legendary status. Not everyone can be like that, but everyone can learn from high performance habits, developing a high performance cult culture and setting clear goals and being held accountable and developing that resilience and work ethic. That's gonna lead to success instead of this aimless way in which it's being done at the minute. And hence why we're getting the 24 year old kind of career cup and burnout. That's not always the case, but I think it's just the fact that we're only starting really to kind of, you know, look at the tip of the iceberg in terms of the health and wellness support. If they people really start to delve deep into that and embedded that into their everyday routine, then you're gonna get a prolonged career there, a, a prolonged successful career. Yeah, and also giving giving the giving the players time to be able to to learn how to deal with it, to cope, to learn how to get good, you know, getting some experience. If it's a kind of crash bang wallop three, four year window, then how can humans possibly ever get very good at it? Because it's gonna be much more random. I think giving people time and space is really important. I mean, listening to you two today talk about this with such passion, but also from an informed perspective of actually doing it. I think it feels personally feels me with the hope that we've got people who are thinking long term because when you think long term you take long term strategies and then you've got you know you've got winning performance but you've got winning the right way you know so we're not it's just not a sausage machine of you know getting young kids in and turning them out you know and the team's bigger than the individuals because that's no way to run any any industry frankly and with, with that statement as well, Andy, I think it comes back to the, the the need for something similar to how kind of professional football and rugby is done in the in the academy system is to prepare these guys of the future for being on stage and being in front of those fans. And, you know, that's only going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. And obviously with COVID as well, there's a bit of a problem at the moment, but hopefully that, you know, we, we get to a better situation with that. But that academy system is so good because it prepares individuals for what is to come and, I think the more we go towards that, the more we're going to get this professionalization of esports. And this is where this health and wellness side of things is going to come in as well. And I think what's tied into that as well, and, and, and this is just my opinion, but I think like the, the way in which teams make health and wellness part of their kind of culture is, is not something that we're seeing at the moment. It's just kind of something that they say, oh, yeah, let's just do this. And, and, and the players have all the same what they do, if that makes sense. Whereas, you know, in my in my experience as a footballer, you know, you, you, you went to the gym, you know, you had your nutrition protocols, you had your recovery protocols, you had to do it. If you wanted to do it, it didn't matter. Like, I didn't really like it at that age, which is quite funny because I'm really into it now. It's just <laughs> contradictory. But, you know, it's something that's ingrained in the culture because they understand the value of it and how important it is to the in-game performance as well. And I think... Once we have this professionalization of, of, of esports, we're really going to start to see that support system come all the way through past the ages of like, you know, 21, 22, up to the age of 30. Um, and yes, like reaction time does decrease with age. We know that. We, we Yeah, that's given. But 
there's no reason why you can't have players that are unbelievable at pattern recognition and that's one of the main you know determinants of success in a, in a lot of games and you know if you take a league of legends for example you know a lot of people will say that and there's no reason why over you know from the age of 20 to 30 you can't improve that skill um over that period of time to be you know one of the best in the world because you have that skill it doesn't you know reaction time is important but it's not the only determinant of success mm. We've... just to jump in and out there really quickly as well a good example of that is the recent call of duty championships the dallas empire they had clayster and crimsix who are two veterans of the scene mm. and you know what they did have three young guns who are obviously incredibly talented in terms of that kind of like quick reaction times and all but they would even say as well it's if if you're at that older age you change your priorities yes you can focus on the health and wellness and longevity but it's really about the map knowledge then so you can offset a lot of the let's say quick fire you know reaction time stuff by being smaller in game through experience so yeah and there's players like get right right on this on the cs scene who certainly are no spring chickens but still you know fantastically um, competitive.